Hey everyone, my name is Elliot. Today I'll be showing you how we can use the Spark BPM document controls to make an interface where users can attach documents and then view them. If you'd like to learn more about the BPM document controls or any control that Spark offers, you can go to our support site and view the controls there at support.salientprocess.com forward slash spark dash UI dash controls. Here you'll see a list of all the controls available with Spark articles that describe how they work, as well as JS documentation to describe the configuration options and the JavaScript methods available. Before diving into the attached documents coach view, I'm going to first run the service to show you what it looks like. The first thing you'll notice is that there are three main sections within the attached documents section. They have the document upload, the document list, and then the document preview. The document upload panel is to contain where the files will be selected and then uploaded. So here we have a file uploader control. If I select the file uploader control, it'll bring up the file explorer where I can choose the file that I want to add. In this case, I will add a resume. After adding the file, it immediately uploads and adds it to the document list here. The document list here will show the file and then details about the file. If I did not want to add the file using the file uploader, I could have selected the file drop zone here, where I could have either opened the file by using the explorer, or if I had an explorer already open with a file that I wanted to add, I could have simply just dragged it over into here and it would have copied into the file drop zone and then uploaded it to the file viewer here. After uploading all the files that I want, I can now preview the files by selecting a file on the file list and it will open up in the document preview collapsible panel on the bottom of the page. If I select the file, you can see that it opens up and I can view the file here. If I wanted to see the file within a new window, I click this option and it opens up a new tab in the browser and now I can see the file on a larger screen. I'm going to go ahead and dive into the attached documents coach view. To get the layout that you saw, you need to use a variety of layout controls that are available to you. The controls we'll be using in this coach view are a panel, collapsible panel, vertical and horizontal layout, and a well. You'll see here that there is an overarching panel called attached documents that contains a well. Within the well, there is a horizontal layout. The horizontal layout has two nested panels within it that are side by side. Within the first panel, the document upload panel, we have a vertical layout with a file selector as well as a file drop zone. Here, we, in this panel, we have a file list, and then finally, on the bottom, we have a collapsible panel with the file viewer inside of it. The variables for the coach view are upload properties and associated with process instance. The first one, upload properties, is of type name value pair and is a list. The associate with process instance is of type boolean. Returning back to the layout, the first thing we want to do is make it so that when the file uploader has a file selected, it automatically uploads the file and then adds it to the document list. To do this, we select the file uploader, go to the configuration options, go to the content management dropdown, and you'll notice that the two variables that we defined, you bind them to their associated file options here so we can associate with process instance when the file is uploaded and then we can also define properties to upload the file with. The next thing we want to view is the behavior dropdown. Within the behavior dropdown you'll notice that the auto upload is checked. This makes it so that when a file is added it automatically uploads into the document store. Lastly, in the events tab when we drop that down, on the upload complete event, we have to find the document file list being refreshed when the upload is complete. This makes it so that when the document 
is uploaded and automatically added to the store, the list will refresh with the newly added document. The next step is to configure the file list. So if we go to the file list, and then to the configuration option in the content management dropdown, two variables that we defined are set here with associate with process instance and then the filter. For the filter, the upload properties that we defined within the file uploader are the ones that will determine what files are actually shown within the file list. At the top here, we have allow document deletion so that files can be removed from the file list. And then if we have the confirm on deletion checked like we do, then a modal alert will pop up making sure that the user is confirmed before the file is actually deleted. If we go to the events dropdown, within here on the on file clicked event, the first part of the JavaScript code is to expand the panel that holds the document viewer, or to uncollapse it. The second bit is the documentation file view dot set URL and then within it the URL. The inner URL is referring to the file that we have selected. The set URL method sets which specific URL you want to view from the file list. If you wanted to add files using the file drop zone, it is very similar to adding files using the file uploader. You would go to the content management dropdown in the configuration options and bind the variables to their configuration option. Then you would go to the behavior tab where you would auto upload by checking this box here. And then go to the events dropdown. And then within the on upload complete, again, you would refresh the file list to have the file list show immediately the document that was just uploaded. This now concludes our demo. I appreciate you watching. Thank you and have a good day.